today from M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. This is the NFL on EA Sports. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to historic Baltimore, Maryland and m and Bank Stadium. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon McManus to kick off. Now the kicker, Brandon McManus, about ready to get us started. And off we go from m and Bank Stadium. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. First time we get to see this Baltimore offense here and feast your eyes on the Madden cover man, Lamar Jackson, taking the field, ready to lead them at quarterback. And to me, he's one of the two most difficult guys in the league to game plan for in the NFL, and I add Patrick Mahomes in that category. But just about every team we talk to getting ready for Lamar Jackson says the exact same thing. We've got to slow him down running the football, yet no one's been able to really do it consistently. Now, the most impressive thing about his game to me, how he's developed as both a passer and a leader. His team believes in him. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. This is Ingram. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. He was brought down by Tom. Defensively, we always know that he is tough and run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll fake the give to Ingram. Now Jackson. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Von Miller doing what he does best with a sack. So how many different ways can we say that Von Miller is an absolute nightmare to prepare for for any offense? An absolute dominant force on the defensive side of the ball. Double-digit sacks in seven of his nine seasons in the NFL. And when he finished the 2019 season, Second in total sacks in NFL history among active players behind only Terrell Suggs. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. From the gun, Jackson. He may try and run for this. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain five yards. And that means they come up short as they're going to have to punt here on the opening drive. And they had an extra defensive back on the field on that play, and the coverage was excellent. He tried to pull it down and run for it, but they rallied to him and kept him short of a first down. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to put it away. Denver has Deontay Spencer deep to return. Deontay Spencer on the return. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Lock now on first down. That's going to be caught by Judy. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. 
Nice catch there by the rookie out of Alabama, Jerry Judy, and I am fired up to see the chemistry develop between he and Drew Locke, their quarterback, and in addition, Cortland Sutton, their Pro Bowl wide receiver from last year. This might be the best pair of receivers the Broncos have had since Demarius Bebe Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. This should be fun for Bronco fans to watch. Cortland Sutton, first time Pro Bowler. He was the intended target, and it's third and five. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, anytime, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. Locke working out of the gun. Got a man, it's Judy complete. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. The second year man Locke to the rookie Judy for a Bronco first. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Locke looks to throw it again. Almost able to intercept it. That's what he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. That took his attention elsewhere to no avail. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. To throw again. Lock. Screen pass to Lindsey. Five yards, now it's third and five. Complete two For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. Again, it's Locke. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. They went with the dive look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. Sam Martin on to kick it away. Taking it about the 16. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. Ball carrier. Well, I think after that run, the defense get back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? And now he'll tuck it and run. He'll wind up getting three on the keeper there, but it leads to a third down. That's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, and defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. They'll try to run for the first with Ingram. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down game. Six yards there. First down, Baltimore. Brandon, what were the 
were thinking on defense there. They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. The tackle made by... Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. We're scoreless after one. With no score. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. of scrimmage the 36 on second and eight and now Jackson will look to throw it that ball caught it's Mark Andrews Today, from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, this is the National Football League. We are just a few miles from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Buffalo Bills and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tyler Bass about ready to get us going. And off we go from Tampa. On the return, Dare Ogunbowale. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. First try on offense for the Bucs and their veteran quarterback, Tom Brady. I'm sure a lot of past teammates for Tom Brady in New England get tired of hearing the phrase, what would Tom Brady do if he's surrounded by weapons? But that's exactly what he's got in Tampa Bay. He's got big-time receivers on the perimeter. You add in Rob Gronkowski at tight end. This may be the best-looking offense that he's ever played with. And now the question is, how quickly will he mesh with those new teammates and take command of his new offense? So first and 10 now from the 30. Shotgun now for Brady. 
And this is caught by Evans. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 13 yards on the game's opening play. Good catch there by Mike Evans and his ability to get downfield and create big plays is something that Tom Brady hasn't had on the perimeter in the last few seasons. Mike Evans often fools defenders with his speed because he's so long, people think he can't be that fast, but he is and combines it with terrific hands and makes big catches. And Brady's throw there, incomplete. Yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Throwing again. Brady to Evans on the slam. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Evans. Mike Evans, 56 yards. And the Bucs have taken a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted. Was it an audible? Or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And that one gives the Bucs a 7 to nothing lead. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. Here's the all-pro returner from 2018, Andre Roberts. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Well, the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. I think the development of Josh Allen as the starting quarterback in Buffalo has been rapid. We knew he had a big arm coming out of college. People question his accuracy, his decision-making a little bit, but I think that continues to improve as well. And the biggest surprise, how well he's used his legs to give them an extra dimension in the running game and give him credit. His completion percentage last season was up six points from the year before. He continues to improve. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Here's Devin Singletary. He played in this state at Florida Atlantic. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. The ball carrier. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. And he completes it to the tight end, Knox. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Allen and Knox teaming up there for Buffalo first down. Now, Charles, what's the mindset here offensively? You gave up the touchdown pretty quickly. Would it have changed if you had gotten a stop and it would be 0-0 right now or no? I wouldn't think so. I think in most cases, just down a touchdown, you know, I mean, we're just getting started here. It should be a long way to go. You think to yourself, stick with the game plan, all the things you worked on in practice. But you have some teams that when they get down, their natural tendency is to aggressively strike back. And let's see if they want to get outside of the game plan we expect and try and be aggressive on their first series. The ball carrier. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. 
a gain of two. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Throwing his Allen on third. And able to find John Brown. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 41-yard line. The Bills passing game getting them down the field. They've got another first down. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner. But to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 41. Here's Allen going deep for Diggs. And incomplete, an excellent play downfield. Should have been picked off, really. But second down instead. He was covered by. What we've seen so far in this game, they are not going to allow a big shot over the top. You can have whatever you want underneath. They'll give you that, but they're not going to let you beat them deep. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen going deep for Diggs. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. Incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Now Allen again. Finding Knox there, complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs' 20-yard line. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. First down. Brandon, lest my eyes deceive me, I think they found a matchup that they're trying to exploit here, don't you? I mean, it's the second time they've gone to him here on this drive. Yeah, opening drive. It's a tone setter, right? I think they're going to be looking his way a lot. Yeah, and I think that the way things are going right now, they like him as a featured receiver. Let's see what kind of adjustments the defense is going to make to try and take that away. Operating from the red zone now, Allen. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. That catch good for only a couple. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. to throw once more and nearly an interception here on their opening drive but instead third down it's been a good opening drive offensively thus far but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion so this is a big play coming up here on third down so the failure to connect on second down that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight And again, it's Allen out to his left. He can run for it, and he will. And they're going to get him down shy of the first at about the 13-yard line. Five yards that time out of the scramble. But now they're looking at a fourth down situation. I like his effort there. He got it done on his own. But let's face it, he puts defenses in a really stressful spot when he takes off and runs because a lot of guys have coverage responsibilities. Good job of rallying, though, because I thought when he first took off, he might pick up the first down. Tyler Bass out for the Bills field goal. 
a 30-yard attempt. The kick by Bass is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Bills 3. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal, you did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes, you don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. So after knocking through the field goal, here's Bass to kick it away. On the return, Ogan Bawale. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Bucks take over first and 10. At their own Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. They had the touchdown on the opening drive of the ball game. It was countered by just a field goal. So, hey, if your guys can do that for four quarters, you're in good shape. Yeah, it is a team game, so that's just good complimentary football. But, you know, I know I'm no brainiac, but you trade sixes for threes, things are going to work out in your favor. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 27. There's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Brought down by Matt Milano. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. To throw on second and six, Brady. It's complete. It's Miller. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Day. from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. The 
It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Philadelphia Randy Eagles. Bullock. Here's Randy Bullock now to put toe to leather, and off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. And he opts to not bring this one out. The first drive will start at the 25. Philadelphia gets ready on offense behind Carson Wentz, the number two pick back in 2016 out of North Dakota State. And when I think of Carson Wentz in his first four years in the league, I kind of look at him as book ends because his first year as a rookie he started all 16 games the next two years beset by injuries but last year started all 16 in the regular season again and was very productive his first 4,000 yard campaign throw on the ball 27 touchdowns and only seven interceptions the injuries got him again in the wild card game but when he's on the field his team is dangerous Throwing on first is Wentz. And nearly picked off there. Almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Sanders, the ball. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. They force the incompletion on first down, and you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Shotgun now for Wentz. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. A loss of five. Always up for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengal offense set to go and leading them out. The number one overall pick back in April out of LSU, Joe Burrow. When you read off Joe Burrow's numbers his last year at LSU, they almost don't even seem correct. I mean, 76% of his passes complete. That's the second best all-time at the collegiate level. End up throwing 60 touchdown passes, accounted for 65 touchdowns, and only threw six interceptions and won a national championship. Joe Burrow is not just a terrific player. He has an it factor as well, and that's what they're counting on in Cincinnati. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Gets it to his running back, Bernard. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and cause a nice play for lost yardage. So negative yardage, a loss of three on second down, and that leads to a tough third down call. Now it's Burrow on the screen, Bernard. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Burrow's They'll get 14 on that one, good for a Bengal first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback. 
that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. Number 28. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. On second down, Burrow. This one grabbed by A.J. Green. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. And he's got some space here. And he's taken down inside the 30. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. We know they have these RPOs in their playbook. And look, we're seeing it here in the first quarter. You think we're going to see it as the game continues? They trotted them out early for a reason, partner. They're letting them know that this is in the arsenal and we rely on it. You better be prepared because this is going to be an all-day affair trying to stop them. They will throw on first down with Burrow. That's complete. Bernard. Burrow is not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Eluding the pressure right. He's going to take off with it. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. And able to find Green. And all the way down inside the five to the four. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Okay, I'm not so great at math, but I just looked over at our statistician, Marvin, and he signaled to me five for five to get things started here on this opening drive. Where I come from, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, what do you do defensively to adjust? Well, this is where you've got to make a decision as, your defensive, as a defensive coordinator. Do you really get after the quarterback? Or maybe you tighten down on the receivers, bump them off of their routes, chip away at their timing so things aren't as precise as they've been so far in this game. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. No score after one on EA Sports. remain for second down. They'll run here with Bernard. And he takes it into the end. 